Hello and welcome to Warblock. Today we're looking at something. There's been a lot of sort of fairly non gamey games, sort of bases being attacked, the Venezuela crisis, um, even this is not much of a game, <coughs> uh, etc. I mean, this one is just a base. Um, this one, not a lot of combat really. This one should be interesting. Just the base. Just the base. Um, here. Interesting, but not a lot of action. But I'm just going to do this Timbuk2 one, because I played it once, and it's just a base one, so it's quite small. Again, as I said, so similar to the others. But it's actually quite interesting. Um, so, what you've got are these Jamat Nasser al Islam Wal Muslim rebels or militants, um, terrorists, if you want to sort of, whatever sort of Nam culture you want to use. Um, they attack the Minusma base in. Um, just outside Timbuktu. It's actually a super base outside Timbuktu. Um, I just wonder whether I've got the details for that. I don't. Uh, it stands for something. Well, basically, it's a, a United Nations sort of operation in um, in Mali, I think. Is this Mali? Yeah, Mali. And it's all part of this Operation Barkane. This is why I've sort of got this. I'll just maybe sort of have a look, quick look at Operation Barkane with the ones that we've got. So what you can see is this one is in um, Mali, this one's in Mali, and this one's in Niger, um, <clears throat> and then also in um, other places, uh, but I can't quite remember. Um, I think. Well, basically, that that sort of area. I'm trying to, yeah, the Congo, I think, Congo and um, Sudan, um, and there was one place in particular that, that sort of I was looking at. But this operation, Operation Barkane, is, is designed to sort of target these militant operations and the Muslim operations, uh, the Muslim sort of uh, focused. Um, well, you know, operations across the sort of that the sort of that Sahel Africa region. Um, so I, I was looking up um, Operation Barkane, and um, so I put all these up pretty much at the same time. But you can see this is like 2015, 2018, 2019. So this is actually quite new. This one. We might have a look at this in a bit. But so this is a sort of an ongoing thing um, that's. Really, sort of um, quite dispersed across, sort of like the, the central sort of mid Africa area, um, and this is um, a particular sort of thing that happened. Now, the thing is that there's sort of quite a lot about this, but the thing that gets me is that in this one, um, or is it? Yeah, I think it's this one. A lot more people died. Um, let's just have a quick look at that. It doesn't say, um, but yeah, not a lot of people actually died here, so it wasn't that that big an issue. Um, but basically, um, what they did, they launched two car bombs. Um, so that's why we sort of got two insurgent units, um, insurgents, insurgents. So these two units here, so they can go and sort of do their thing. Um, but the last two, two car bombs, one of which succeeded, the other failed. One of them was in a Niska vehicle, presumably that they captured. Um, and then they infiltrate the base, though I fired rockets at it, and they infiltrate it. And, it, you know, after several hours of fighting, um, basically they get, um, receive support. Um, you know, that people, these sort of forces come to their aid, so you get some French aircraft, um, French, American, and Mali troops. Um, so these troops, so the, the the Mali sort of appear on the board earlier, but I'm not sure whether they arrive first because they're still going to drive. 
think they arrive sort of here. So they've got to sort of come in all the way through Timbuktu and down here or come along here. And when I did it, I drove along here and then to here, or I came along here. I think I went there and come down here. But you know, we'll, we'll play it. The thing is, this game doesn't take that long. And so you could play it three or four times. And I got basically, I got a really interesting result. Now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to get an interesting result again. Um, because as you can see, there's not a lot to it. There's just this one unit. So it really depends on those first few turns. And then you start to get sort of reinforcements, the, you know, the, the French, um, and then the French Special Forces. Now, they're, air, they're, they're airlifted in. So you basically get these airlifted in, and these are the US Special Forces. Now, I don't know what I think. I think this is just an oversight, giving them a seven, so even though they're mobile in some way. But the thing is, you know, there's so much desert out here that you could probably almost imagine landing a sort of transport plane or even landing in, in this airbase here, the air airport. They did Timbuktu, uh, Timbuktu Airport, so maybe they just landed down here. But um, And also a little oversight. It's not so much an oversight, but it always leaves me wondering because uh, I've got this in, the, in a similar scenario. Um, in, I'm just going to look at it now. This Arish one, which is again incredibly simple. Um, well, it's, it's actually, yeah. This is Arish, and it's maybe a little bigger than it appears there, but it's quite a significant town. You think, well, why don't these rebels go and attack Arish? Well, presumably because it, it's quite well uh, um, defended. So, um, so I put this. That is why I put these police units in there. They're not there for any other game purpose. But the similar argument here. Why don't they just take Timbuk two? There's no units. There. So in this in these sorts of scenarios, the assumption is that. You know, there is something in here, but it's tied up, and so you're not going to go and take it. But you could, they could just drive along here and take Timbuktu out. What's the point of being in a base out here if there's nothing in Timbuktu? So, and I think you've got to sort of play and, and, and interpret these scenarios, you know, in a realistic fashion, in that sense, and sort of, you know, accept those facts that you know, this is representative of the assault on this super base. Um, and, and, you know, the military targets do tend to attack military targets, um, you know, because they probably couldn't hold Timbuktu, or there probably wouldn't be any point in Timbuktu, uh, in, in, in taking Timbuktu, or even trying to take Timbuktu. And, you know, just to some extent, it's sort of like, well, there's more, not so much kudos, but there's, 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 there's a greater point for a purpose to attacking enemy units, because, you know, you know it keeps them sort of, you know, on, on their toes at, at bay, and you know it keeps the pressure on them, um, as as opposed to, um, you, you know, of, of avoiding them, etc. You know, I mean, situations like that can cause um, you know, defending units so much fear that they just rout or or, or they just give up. Um, you know, if they're continually under the threat of rocket fire or, you know, car bombs, you know, the reason they do those things is not just for the damage, it's that, you know, they have to keep that up so that, you know, these people sort of, well, they, they, their morale is lower and, and you know, they, they, they will tend to sort of flee and, and, and leave sooner. Um, you know, I think we've seen that in Yemen. Um, and you know, in quite a lot of other places, really, where the troops are sort of like you know, they, they give up, you know, sooner than than, than later. I was reading something a while back about you know the effect of IEDs on on troops, and um, you know they can paralyze troops because they they just don't know what's going to happen. You know, they, you know, it's not like they get a warning. Oh, you're gonna this is an IED, and you can do something about it. I and mean, one one moment you're there, and the next minute you're gone. And so, you know, attacking this base probably has that sort of deeper purpose and meaning as opposed to trying to take and hold Timbuktu, which would probably be, you know, impossible. But, you know, the point is, in this game, you could do that. Um, and so we've got to assume that there's probably a greater task force in there and there's a purpose, a greater purpose for actually attacking this super base, um, you know, to try and get rid of, you know, Minusma. Minusma. Um, you know, as, a, as a military force, and to you know, to, to lower their morale for you know purposes of you know their continued operations. I mean, you know, 
being attacked in their own base and what chance they're going to have out, outside of it, etc. But that's all sort of something else where it's all a bit, a bit in the background, um, which is some of my thoughts. But they launch these two car bombs and then they infiltrate the base and they fire rockets at it. Um, and then, you know, as I said, the, um, the French aircraft, the Mali troops arrive sort of in the first tranche and then the, uh, the French and the Americans are sort of airlifted in. How they get in, uh, you know, it's really, um, I, don't, I don't actually know um, whether they're coming through the airport, whether they're sort of, you know, transport planes into a desert location or whether they're helicopters, etc, etc. Um, but, so we're just going to play. Uh, I'm just going to plug my computer in. Computer plugged back in. Um, this is my. This is an old laptop. This is another old laptop from somewhere else. Now. I've got old laptops everywhere now, from the main laptop. Ever since IBM updated it, it can't record audio. I'm sure it has a denial of service attack on my computer. I'm confident of that. It really frustrates me that IBM, uh, uh, Microsoft, update your computer without your permission. You know, I mean, it was a real bug there. You know, it means you, it, it's a bit like that. This is like Microsoft attacking me See, because they keep doing it. You're always permanently scared of doing things like going out and leaving a document unsaved. You've got to be really careful. I mean, I've done this. I'm writing something and I've backed it up into a Word document and I'm writing it into a web space. And I thought, I know what will happen. Something will happen and it will get shut down. And, and I know Word auto saves. And I went out. I came back an hour later. And yep. The whole system had basically decided to upgrade itself, and it had done it so soon after I'd gone out that the um, the word document hadn't auto saved, and I lost everything. It was just, you know you can take these precautions, and you live in this world of fear. You live in, you live in fear of Microsoft updating your laptop, and, and as far as I'm concerned, damaging it and. and Installing whatever it wants to, um, you, you know. I mean, basically, my sound doesn't work, and it was exactly and immediately, directly after a Microsoft update. I don't want them updating my computer. What's the point of updating the computer? I mean, if if if, if it had to last twenty years, then, then maybe. But if if the computer only lasts one year, you can safely say I will I'll, I'll be content with its performance for one year. See, look. This is Microsoft, it's been listening to me. It's been listening to me, and this is their automatic interference with my broadcast. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, I'll create first I don't get all the way there, I think that's as far as I can get. Over. Sometimes it thinks it's moved. Yeah, but it, it 
which is the answer. So that's that. So we'll end the first turn. So it's taken a turn just to get near the base. And so, so what happens next is the two carbide ones go in. Now last time I did this, neither of them worked. Um, let's go. Okay. Only one unit to attack. Oh. No, insurgent action failed, but was not caught. So we can get them out of the way. Insurgent action failed, but was not caught. Okay, so these of them worked on this time. They're not very powerful, these insurgents, but I sort of think that's quite realistic. Um, right. Move these there, should be in one, two, three. We should be in rocket range now. Two, two, five. Now, this is just a game of dice rolling, really. And if I play this three times, we might get three different results. Because if I don't win on the first turn, there's the chances of success drastically go downhill in the exchange. So there they are attacking the base. So in a simulation, this is what is happening. And, and I know that as far as a war game goes, it's probably not that exciting. But the thing is, when I played it, I got sense of sort of, well, you know, how realistic is this? And I know nothing's realistic, um, and I'm not trying to make it realistic, but you sort of get a sense of um, the suspension of disbelief in the sense that you could sort of say, well, you know, this, it could be representative of what's happening. I mean, they're attacking the base, there is an exchange, so there's a sort of like exchange of fire. Um, the rockets have come in, the insurgent attacks have happened, in, case, in this case they both failed, but the rockets are coming in. Now, one thing to point note, uh, to note is that they're stacked up in one stack. I could have put them in two and got a 10% bonus, but once you do that, they become quite vulnerable. Now, they're, they're only worth three, so the uh, municipal mechanised force can fight back at one to one, but because they're fighting irregulars, and they're mechanised, they'll probably get a bonus, but it won't be enough. It's not only a two times bonus. So if we were to split one of these units to there, so he was only on his own, so it'd be one there and two there, for example, it would be three three to one with a bonus, possibly a four to one. So they're actually quite sensitive in that um, if they get attacked, you know, that sort of thing can happen. Now the thing is, another thing to point out is that they've now been hit once. So I've got one one depression. Now they've got one depression because they are using exchange, where they've got 1.25. Um, but when they recover, they should recover one of that. 0.25 was from the rockets. Um, so they should recover a bit of that. So we're not going to do anything. So this is now turn two, sort of over. Oh. Yeah, so that's their turn done. Um, it's turn two for Minsk, so they're not going to do anything. Which means that they're now recovered at 0.25, but these should be still at 1. So we've now got this extra round. Now the insurgents will not be able to do anything more. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two things here. Because basically, they're going to take another 5 turns. And it's a five, 5 of their turns before they'll be ready again. Um, what I want to do is just see if I can actually move them off the board. I don't remember how these things work. <laughs> it worked. I can't believe that. I've never really used that before. It's a bit of a convoluted way to do it, but um, maybe I can make it so that after I press this, it just goes to back to the home screen. It, it's clear, because the thing is, you might have five units in there, I, I don't know. Um, so they've now moved off the board, um, but we're going to fire our rockets. Uh, 
and this time we did some damage. But now these are still at 1, and these are at 1.35, so probably still be a 1 to 1. Ah, but the attacker retreated. So, there we go. I mean, there's this tremendous sort of firefight going on. Um, you know, they haven't, I don't think we can safely say that they've managed to infiltrate the base. Now, maybe they did. Um, but on this time, they've been re repulsed. And I'm glad it's going this way because the thing is, and I'm going to say this is realistic, but it's sort of, when you start thinking about the odds, I mean, there's a two one to one attacks. They can get a defender retreat. And that would be quite boring because it's like, oh, the insurgents come along here, attack and win. You know, I'm pretty sure that that you know a one to one odds they're not good odds you don't attack at one to one one to one might sound fair it might sound you know reasonable and good but it's not it's not a good odd i mean it's like a you know it's 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 a, a losing odd to fight at um um so you know i mean if you want to you know i think the russian doctrine in sort of cold war was 11 to 1 odds um so you know you, you've got to be um so i think i think if you sort of you know, look at it in that light. It's quite an interesting sort of representation of, of what could have happened. Now, the, the other thing I was just looking to add and reflect on there is if you compare this to some of these other things that I was talking about, where like a lot of people died. I'm pretty sure that in this one, um, a lot more people. 10. So there's 10 killed there. There's another one more recently. And, you know, they, I think in, in this one, it, it, the, when you read the write up, it, it makes it out as though it's this really big thing. Um, let's look at the Wikipedia. There's more. Okay. So 15 militants died, and one peacekeeper was killed, and I, I was amazed by these pictures, and they're actually, I thought these were some kind of defences, but they're actually Muslim shrines, um, a particular type of Muslim shrine, and before it plays, and it stop it. Um, and these militants being, um, Fundamental, I think, or you know, a sort of more extreme form of Muslimism. Uh, they, they, they're going around destroying these Muslim shrines, uh, Muslim shrines and uh, burial shrines, and they've been going around Mali destroying them. And you know, that's um, something. Obviously, it's a picture, and I looked it up and I tried to. I thought it was a defence. I thought I'd be making these things. And I thought, how could that? It looks like a big tank trap. Um, so, but anyway, the thing is, they lost 15 militants. That's what it said. Uh, now I think we can, you know, in this representation of, of what we've got going on there, we can say, well, you know, there's one peacekeeper died, and 50 militants died, you know, and, and at this stage, the attack has been repulsed, and we could sort of say, well, that's that, I don't want to play it anymore, because we've lost, so we'll end that turn, and it's the Minusma turn, now they, they're at 1.35, but if we don't do anything, we'll be down to 0.35, now the thing is, they're, 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 he's on the three depression now. You know, they're, all, they're all on three because they, they, they were exchanged once, that was one, and they got an attack of the trait adding two. So to continue with this battle is actually fruitless and pointless, and I think at this stage we'd probably run away. Um, and, and I think we'd get a, a true and accurate reflection and modelling in, in that situation according to those sort of random die rolls of what we saw in the report. In that, in that sort of newspaper thing. So the thing is, we could sort of say, okay, well, they're going to leave now, because I think that would be fair enough. And what they will, so what they're trying to do, they're trying to come up here, they're trying to create damage with the insurgent car bombs, they're trying to create damage with the rockets, and then they're trying to get their one to one to actually work in their favour. So they're basically, you know, obviously they don't do this, but obviously they're looking for a dice roll of one, two, or three. Um, I think that's, that's what you need to get a DR. Um, now, obviously, they don't roll dice. Um, if it did, there would be no blood loss, etc., um, etc. Et but the thing is, if you sort of um, 
consider that newspaper report on the on the website we just looked at it's quite accurate. It's quite you know we can say well okay, fifteen of these merchants died and one of these UN peacekeepers died. But for the sake of this game, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one more attack just because I'm recording. I'm not going to do any more because I'm actually quite tired. I was going to break three times and just see how it went. Um, and again, it's just a number, a game of numbers. Oops. Let's do the rocket attack first. One point five. There you go. <laughs> I think this is. I think this happened last time as well, actually. So they've now overrun the base, which is not what happened. But this is what it. You know, the game is really just down to numbers. Um, so they've all moved in there. Um, I'm not going to attack again across this river. So they're on uh, 3.8. It would have been nice if they failed. They've now destroyed the base, I believe. No, one more turn and now we would destroy it. From the minister turn, they're going to move to there. And here we get our reinforcements. We're going to sit there and recover and destroy the base. Base now destroyed. And now it's the so we get our air airstrikes. Seven. I don't want to be attacked. So we cross this river at the end of the, the, the end of the turn. Safety and numbers. Now they're going to run away. Okay, well, they get the air power coming in. Which causes some damage, but it's very irrelevant now. And we can recover the base. Well, let's do this in this way. In one hit. I think I've done more than one unit before. Let's see if it works. Yep. Well, there you go. So. That's interesting because it's also like that unit. Hmm. 
something went wrong there. I'll have to figure that one out. I hate it when I get something like this wrong because it just means <laughs> it's hours of work to sort it out. And I'm definitely not doing that now. Hello, there he is. Why did he not show? He temporarily vanished. Maybe it was something else I'm just not thinking about. No, well, it's not as bad as it could have been. Um, and then we get our special forces that can come in and they'll land in Timbuktu. So something else had gone wrong there, but no. There they are in Timbuktu, nothing to fire at. So I think that's, that's that. It, it's an, that was an interesting variant. Um, I'm not sure what happened last time. I think, I mean, obviously it's just a game of numbers, and I think you've got to abstract that out into a sort of a, a, um, a dialogue, a narrative about you know how you can perceive that as, and then you interpret that as as being, you know, a simulation or, or how things did go or could have gone. Um, you know, they could have failed on that last attack. I mean, getting a one, getting, well, they got a two. I mean, that's you know, out of the that's one in six. So, that, you know, after three attacks, they failed the first two and they got the third one. So, that was probably, um, probably quite reasonable. I mean, basically, for every two, you would imagine one of both. Um, well, no, you wouldn't actually, because that would be a 50% chance. Um, there would be, if you're getting, um, one in, this is basically a one in four. So basically, they should have got one every four, and they got one in three. So, you know, it went a little bit more in their favour, but the odds are still just as reasonable for getting that one result in um, on the first one. For example, if we did four and we got one, that would be almost, you know, what you would imagine mathematically. Um, but it could happen on the first roll. Um, we'd have to roll the fourth one to find out that that didn't work to say that it was, you know, within, it was sort of within the normal spread or odds as, as you might imagine them to go. Um, but it, it, I think, the, I mean, the way I did it there, I didn't really think about it, but I just withdrew them afterwards because we destroyed the base. And historically, we didn't destroy the base, so, we had when I when I didn't want to go on because I didn't want to go on after an attack of a tree. I sort of thought, well, you know, this is the time when they would leave. And um, but the thing is, because it's just a game, you sort of feel compelled to sort of just continue in, in that light. And we got the, the you know the two die roll, which forced these out of the base. But you know, I, I think it's quite an interesting game. And I played this you know myself first. And I think you know when you look at something like this which is pretty much the same thing, but there's only this one unit and then there's four of these units. It's a little less interesting because there's no there's no time scale, there's no um um reinforcements. Um but this one does actually have and uh, this one's actually a completely different kettle of fish. Um oh, I don't want to do that. Because you get these reinforcements on there, I just think it's sort of you know it gives you a really good insight into these, these kinds of things, and I'm, I'm I'm quite interested at the moment in the um, the Operation Barcane, um, and I've been reading a bit about it. Um, you know, I did all these three pretty much in the same go, but you know it, it sort of becomes something that is now on my horizon that I was not familiar with before. Um, I think when you read about Minusca in the Wikipedia thing, there's, I think this is, no, this is the Hell region. Um, it talks about all the operations, as you see, I've gone through here and sort of got these. Um, so this is 22nd of February, which is just three days ago. Um, French forces backed by an armed Reaper drone. 
haven't got any drones. I have got drones in actually, um, and a helicopter attacked a JNIM convoy, killing 11 militants. Um, and again, something like that is, is quite doable. It just these sorts of things remind me of the um, the Egypt one. Um, let me just see if I can find it. Now I do do them, and uh, it's not as I particularly selective. I, when I, what I was thinking a lot also is that it fits in the line of it being a blog and blogging about things. But I think this one here, Western Egypt, all they've got to do is drive from there <laughs> across to this objective. It's probably not a particularly exciting game, and as I say, I've got that, that, that far on here, but you do take them out with the Egyptian F-16s. So, in this one here, if I was to do this, French forces back by an armed reaper and a helicopter attack, well, there's actually troops in this one, so maybe it would be interesting, but it would be no more exciting than this. You, you know, and you, think, you might sort of think, well, why do a game like that? Uh, why? Well, what, what, is this a game? Why do it? And I've also done lots of things that are, you know, quite alarmingly unplayable as games. Um, you know, ranging from two Angola scenarios, one where there's no enemy and you've got the wrong intelligence, but it, you, know, you learn things from that. You know, they, they, they put this operation together to take out this base based on some op op evidence, some operational intelligence. Um, that they didn't double check, and there was no one there. Um, the other one where they, uh, it's, it's a friendly fire operation, you know, it's sort of like these things, you sort of, you know, what why, why do I do them? Well, the thing is, you know, this whole thing, it just adds to the, the whole sort of, you know, perspective of understanding, you know, these sorts of engagements, whether it's 1946 or, or 2019. Um, and, and understanding the true nature of modern warfare, which is, you know, and in a lot of cases, what's happening again and again in a lot of situations that we're seeing is militants are attacking bases, whether it's the sort of um, little things like, well, here, this is a new one. I'm not playing this yet. This is the surrender of Maraf. And it's a surrender. Basically, these units just run away, and that's it. So that's not much of a game. Um, but what we've got down here, somewhere, if I can find it, possibly, you know, is this, where they're just going around attacking these little micro bases. Um, and so, so militants attacking bases is, is like sort of you know quite a lot of what, what's happening. And so you, you sort of it must be quite. A, Quite concert, disconcerting, you know, being in a base, you think you might be quite secure. I mean, there's quite a lot, I'm not going to find them all, um, but there's that other one where four armed Mujahideen went into a, an, Af a, an Afghanistan base and killed nearly 200 soldiers, you know, involved in a gunfight for nearly, nearly four hours before they were killed. Um, you know, these bases are, are being our targets, and so you end up with this, sort of this picture where you start to sort of see, well, because these are all, these are, you know, these two are bases being attacked, and there's lots of other ones. And, and I'm just sort of trying to say, you know, that there's, you know, these things, they don't all have to be sort of, oh, I, I don't know, these, like, word are, you know, these massive sort of, you know, frontline engagements, and you can't really appreciate that from there, but, you know, if we're looking at this one here, you know, you get all these troops coming up here. This, this is more archetypal, sort of, you know, hex encounter war games. Where you can get your teeth into the sort of the number crunching of you know bombing lines and, and doing things. Well, there's not really not much here. You go along and you take the base. But here, there's a little more variance in, in, in sort of how it can happen. And you could play this three or four times and get different results. You could play it where they win on the first turn. You could play it where they don't win at all. You know, they don't. They don't. They do three or four one-to-one -one attacks. But as we know, if they don't do it before too long, the the, the French air power comes in. The special forces land, and the reinforcements arrive, and obviously we've got the the, the um the, the French troops to the, the U.S. troops to arrive next. So um, that's that really. I'm, I'm not going to spend much more on, on, on this one, but I did enjoy you know when I, when I sort of play tested this earlier. I might have to double check on what happened with that. I don't know what happened with that. I've got an idea, but um, 
it might have been just my an optical illusion, but I don't think it was. But um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, I will uh, speak to you later. Cheerio.